Let's talk about complex division. We've learned how to do addition, subtraction, multiplication of complex numbers. How does one do division? Well, before we can introduce division, we're going to introduce something we call the complex conjugate of a complex number. So let's say that we have some complex number z equals a plus bi. Then we define its conjugate to be the complex number where you switch the sign of the imaginary part. So plus goes to minus and minus goes to plus. And you often denote this by drawing a bar over the complex number. So as you can see here, if I take 2 plus 3i, its complex conjugate is just 2 minus 3i. You switch the imaginary part. And then the complex conjugate of negative 6 minus 2i would be negative 6 plus 2i. You just switch the sign of the complex conjugate, or the complex, or the imaginary number. Uh, positive goes to negative, negative goes to positive. When you calculate the conjugate, you ignore uh, the sign of the real part. If, it's po if the real part's positive, it stays positive. If the real part's negative, it stays negative. You're just going to switch the imaginary sign. And why do we care about this? Well, this is going to be helpful as we do complex division here because of the following property. If you take a complex number and you multiply by its conjugate, um, this is actually equal to a sum of squares of its real imaginary parts. And you can see this very quickly. If you take z times z bar, uh, let me switch to a different color here. You're going to take a plus bi, and you multiply by its conjugate, a minus bi. If we, if we foil this out by the rules of complex multiplication, you're going to get a squared minus a bi. Then you're going to get a bi, positive this time, and then a minus b squared i squared. And you'll notice that there's a negative ABI and a plus ABI. They're going to cancel out. And so this then gives you A squared minus BI squared. But as we recall, I is the square root of negative 1, which means I squared is equal to negative 1. And so then this expression becomes A squared minus a negative B, a negative B squared there. Uh, which then becomes the a squared plus b squared like we wanted to. So when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, you always get a sum of real numbers, a sum of squares. And so let me show you how you can use this to compute complex quotients. If you have a fraction, a complex fraction, like 1 over 3 plus 4i, the strategy that we're going to employ is you're going to take the denominator, which in this case is 3 plus 4i, and you're going to multiply the top and bottom by the of the fraction by its complex conjugate. So you get, you're going to multiply top and bottom by 3 minus 4i. Notice how I switched the sign right here. Then you're going to multiply the top and bottom using this complex conjugate. 1 times anything will just be that number, so we get 3 minus 4i. And then in the denominator, since you're multiplying a complex number by its conjugate like we saw before, you're going to get the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. 3 squared plus 4 squared. So you get you 3 minus 4i. Uh, then this will be over 9 and 16, which adds together to be 25. So we get 3 minus 4i, and this will sit above 25, just right there. Which we could then break this up into a complex number. This looks like 3 over 25 minus 4 over 25i. And so this then would be the reciprocal of the complex numbers. And I'll leave it up to you to check. If you take 3 plus 4i and you multiply it by 3 over 25 minus 4 over 25i, this product is equal to 1, thus showing that we did find the reciprocal of the complex number. Uh, let's, do, let's do a few more examples of this. If you had 1 plus 4i over 5 minus 12i, the idea would be multiply the top by the conjugate which in this case would be 5 plus 12i. You don't really have to worry about the denominator because the denominator, when you fold it out, you'll always get the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. That's always what it's going to be. In the numerator, it will take a little bit more effort as we FOIL this. You're going to get 1 times 5. You'll get 1 times 12i. You'll get 4i times 5. And then you'll get 4i times 12i, which is going to be a negative 48. i squared is negative 1. Uh, combining like terms now in the top, you're going to get 5 minus 48, which is a negative 43. 12i plus 20i is a 32i. In the denominator, we get 25 plus 144. And so always writing these in its real and imaginary part, you're going to get negative 43 over 169. And then you're going to get 32 over 169i. When you're working with complex numbers, it's always our goal to write this as a real part and an imaginary part. Uh, let's do another example. 
take two minus three i divided by four minus three i. So we're gonna multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator, four plus three i. The numerator, you'll foil it out. So two times four is eight, two times three i is a six i, negative three i times four is a negative 12 i, and then you're gonna get negative three i times three i, three times three is nine, uh, i squared is a negative one, and since there's already a negative, it becomes a plus right here. In the denominator, you're gonna get a sum of squares, four squared, which is 16, plus three squared, which is nine, like so. Combining like terms, eight and nine are gonna give us a 17. Uh, 16 plus nine is a 25 for the denominator. And then six minus 12 is gonna give us a negative six over 25i. So it's not so bad. And then maybe we do one more example just to really send it home for us, right? If you wanna divide by five plus two i, you're gonna to times top and bottom by the conjugate, which would be five minus two i. Foil out the numerator. So you get two times five, which is 10. Two times negative two i, which is a negative four i. Negative three i times five, which is a negative 15 i. And then this next one, you're gonna get negative three times negative two, which is a six, and then i squared is negative one still. And then this will sit above five squared, which is 25, plus two squared, which is four. And so combining like terms, 10 take away six is a four. This will sit above 29. And then negative four minus 15 is a negative 19, sitting above 29, uh, and then you times that by i which then gives us the quotient right here. And so it's always our goal to write this as a real part plus an imaginary part. Every complex number can be written as a plus bi. And so we're gonna break up the fraction when we do division, spread the denominator across the real part and the imaginary part like we've been doing in these examples here.